In this segment, we look at the tools and concepts to enable us to achieve deploy when ready throughout an automated continuous integration pipeline. We start with a developer's local machine, where source code is written. Developers add unit tests to assert whether each line of code works as intended. This test first approach is also used here. We stand up a separate set of servers to run system integration tests. We stand up yet another set of servers, called the staging environment or whatever, to run infrastructure stress tests. Code for each of these automated tests are all stored in a source code repository, GitHub or GitLab being the most popular at the moment. When code is pushed to a source code repository for review, it triggers additional automatic actions by the Jenkins server. Jobs handled by Jenkins are defined by plugins or Groovy scripts. The SonarCube utility is important not just to identify where scans of code violate a team's standards, but also to collect and house the history of test results over time, which is used to define the status of done at each point throughout the project lifecycle. Jenkins senses whether jobs are done, so when code quality is good enough, Jenkins can automatically start a chain of jobs that builds from source code executable stored in a binary repository such as Nexus or Artifactory. Packages of executables are deployed onto servers so tests can be initiated automatically. Deployment is automated by Ansible or uDeploy. Jenkins automates its deployment pipeline with post-build actions, which include automatic invocation of system tests. Since Jenkins can sense if a test finished successfully, it can also deploy to downline servers and staging or whatever and immediately begin stress tests. Tests can also be kicked off automatically due to activity within GitLab. In the version control repository, we also keep configuration settings used to specify provisioning of hardware, operating systems, and utilities on servers. This works by first applying a common group of settings that are applicable to multiple environments. Configuration settings specific to each particular server override those common specifications. All this enables servers to be immutable, meaning unchangeable. Instead of jumping into a server to make a custom change, we now change the configuration delta files and from them create new servers or start from scratch on dedicated servers. An example of configuration is drivers for APM metrics capture being installed on all servers to obtain measurements for trend analysis on a separate central server. When anomalies are recognized, alerts are emitted to trigger remedial actions such as sending more emails, which developers receive on their laptops. In summary, we combine test first and configuration as code strategies so that as soon as the first component is available, we can deploy and test it all the way through the various environments. This makes for early exposure of hidden impediments to our ability to deliver code quickly. This diagram illustrates an example use of what is called the Git flow approach. It uses various Git branches to coordinate work that occur in parallel. Each developer creates feature branches to introduce changes. Features are edited in parallel with long-running branches such as the master branch holding production code. Code and other branches begin as a virtual copy of master. If master needs a quick patch, a new hotfix branch is created to group the various updates within that branch so lower branches can be kept current. The develop branch is used by the development team to evaluate how well feature branches from various team members work together. That's the job of system level load tests. A release branch is created to hold code used on servers running infrastructure stress tests. Webhooks can be defined in GitLab to kick off those tests run automatically when something new is pushed into each branch within the repository. When the history of transaction timings from tests in the various environments are stored together and then downloaded locally for the components a developer is working on, Running micro benchmarks can inform developers immediately after a component is run locally. The ultimate objective of test automation here is that they become quick enough that even hot fixes to production can be tested automatically within a tight time window, reducing a large exposure to risks of failure.